How much do we know about the Goths? Those fortunate enough to keep at a sound distance from the historical discourse shall probably think of those numerous Bela Lugosi impersonators who live by their hairspray and their macabre aesthetics. Those who did devote some of their time to tearing through all the insurmountable dogma and inexplicable lacunae in place of vibrant ages and civilizations that one finds in history textbooks will doubtlessly think of Jordanes and Cassiodorus in this respect and recollect the Goths to have been a group of Germanic tribes who swarmed Europe in the alleged 3rd century AD, and alleged is a key word here, to rape, pillage and terrorize. But how Germanic were they really, and when exactly have they been introduced to us as such? According to Anatoly Fomenko, one of the world's leading mathematicians, the Goths were Slavic through and through. This alone would fail to make a piece of sensational news, however, Fomenko really finds sensational telling us that the Gothic tribes were none other but the biblical nations of Gog and Magog. That might sound like nonsense, after all, don't the Old Testament events date back to times immemorial? However, once you delve into the long-awaited English translation of Fomenko's history, fiction or science, you shall very soon discover that official history is absolutely and completely without competition in terms of making nonsense sound like science. History, fiction or science? Is a phenomenal and unprecedented scientific experiment since neither state-of-the-art methods of mathematical statistics nor astronomical data have ever been applied to history before. One would expect such a procedure to yield interesting results, but interesting doesn't remotely approach the results of Fomenko's research. Ancient and medieval history transform into a phantom, leaving us with the historical period of a single millennium to encompass everything from Jesus Christ who is proved to have lived in the 11th century AD to today. Definitely nonsense and positively impossible, you say? Just wait till you get infected with the new chronology mem, and mark our words, looking back at your vehement support of consensual history will be most embarrassing indeed. We are accustomed quite well to thinking that the events described in the Bible, and especially in the Old Testament, date back to an epoch so distant that it can hardly be called historical in the usual sense. We seem to know everything there is to know about these times and these characters, in particular that most of them date to epochs preceding the New Era by a couple of millennia, and that the events described in the Bible took place in and around the Middle East for the most part. Could all of what we know be untrue? Even the most scrupulous of scientists who ever had to tackle the gigantic array of data contained in the Bible were basing their research on the existing chronology. The sole exception to this is a group of mathematicians who have used the newest statistical methods to analyze the Bible from an altogether different standpoint, having revised the consensual chronology completely prior to that. The results are astonishing to say the least. We learn that the Biblical Jerusalem was in fact located on the Bosporus and known as Constantinople and that the Biblical kingdoms of Israel and Judah can be identified as the medieval Roman Empire. The familiar characters transform into the medieval doppelgangers which are a lot less familiar to us but known quite well to historians. This book will change your entire perception of history forever. What if ancient Rome, Greece and Egypt were invented during the Renaissance? What if the Old Testament was a rendition of events in the Middle Ages? What if Jesus Christ was born in 1053 and crucified in 1086 AD? Sounds unbelievable? Not after you've read History, Fiction or Science by Anatoly Fomenko, the leading mathematician of our time.